Welcome to Dropping Gems. I'm your host, Julian Saluda, local barber in downtown LA. Today, we are here at the gallery. Before we start the show, I would like to thank you guys for tuning in to get to know some of my favorite clients on my list. For today's episode, we have Gabriel Rosado, or if you're a boxing fan, you probably know him as KGR. Say so shout out to Gabe for having for joining us today at Dropping Gems episode one. Yeah, yeah. The whole point of the show is to take y'all back to before you were a superstar to who you are now. Yeah, yeah. So let's start with something light. Where are you from, man? Philly, man. Philly, so rocky and all that. North, North yeah. Philly to be exact. So the reason why we're doing this is to take you back to before you were KGR. So what was Gabriel doing before he was a professional boxer? Yeah. Man, he had all types of jobs, bro. Fucking Home Depot, yeah, Graveyard yeah. Shift. Yeah. Uh, I worked for the water company, putting water mains on the ground. I worked at the mall. I feel like I feel like a lot of people don't really understand when you're trying to be a fighter, but yeah. then at the same time juggling two worlds at yeah. once. You know what I'm saying? Well, I was fighting professionally, but I was working my way up the rankings. You know, I, w I really wasn't making a lot of money in the beginning of my professional career. Look, I didn't have a big back and, you know, no big manager, no big promoter, nothing like that. I was pretty much just grinding off the muscle. So just working. Then after, after work, man, just going straight to the gym, putting in, putting in work. How old, were you, how old were you when you uh, started fighting professionally? I, I started boxing late, bro. I started at 18. Mm. So... You started, like, boxing at 18? 18, like, bro. Like... But I was, I was good with my hands, bro. I was good with my hands. Because, you know, in Philly, you know, you definitely got to... Definitely gotta have hands in Philly, bro. There's one thing when you're from Philly, man. You can ball, you can rap, or you can you, you can box. It's, either, it's one or the other. You know what I mean? You think you think that's a rocky thing, or that's just like the name? No, nah, man. It's just it's just you know it's just Philadelphia is just tough. It's a rough city, bro. People's quick to fight. So I was good with my hands, man. I was and I was always a fan of the sport. So at 18, I said, man, you know, I wanna I wanna do something with my life. So I picked up boxing, bro. And uh, a year of uh, amateurs, I probably only had 11 amateur fights. I went pro at 19. So I was pretty much learning on the job. Let me ask you this, like, how do you feel about athletes either starting late to become professional or, you know what I'm saying? I feel like age yeah. is a huge difference yeah. with going professional, right? No, yeah. So like, how do you feel about like, people that are listening right now that want to be a fighter, yeah. an all-star, uh, an athlete, and they're like barely starting at your age, 18, which is- Well, particularly particularly with like boxing, you know what I'm saying? Cause like, you know, a sport like basketball is something where, you know, you definitely have to start, you know, in high school and college and things like that, right? It's, it's different mm -hmm. to answer like, you know, if you want to, if a guy wants to make it to the NBA, right? It's a yeah. different path you have to take where, you know, Boxing is a poor man's sport, you know what I'm saying? I agree. You know, all these legends and, and these fighters that, you know, the world looks up to, you know, these guys came from nothing. You know, you're Filipino, Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. You know, there's photos of Manny Pacquiao we, training we, in the gym. We've with, talked about this before. We, barefoot. Yeah, we talked saying? about this before. Like, you told me before, you're like, about people that become fighters, they usually have nothing. Oh, yeah. To be in a fight, and, you know what I mean, you're, you're bleeding, you know what I mean, you probably got a broken hand, whatever, and you got to yeah, fight through yeah. that shit. You got to have a certain type of hunger to say, fuck it. Yeah. Let's go, you know what I mean? I feel like a lot of people don't understand the fact that you take fights that not a lot of boxers would take. Yeah. Like, you know, you were Madison Square Garden, right? Triple G, big fight. Yeah. How was that? Like. That's what you do it for, you know what I'm saying? You do it to fight for... The, the big fights, the HBO fights, the pay-per-view fights, the world title fights. You know, that was the whole purpose of why I answered, you know what I'm saying, was to fight the best. But your question where you were saying like, yeah. these young, these guys that probably start late, it's funny because I get guys that, they'll hit me up on my DM and they'll be like, hey man, I'm, I'm 19 or I'm 20 and you think I'm too old to start. The moment you start off with that question, you already, you already lost. You already lost. Because you already like, lost your confidence. I, I ain't never, I ain't never asked approval for nobody. I ain't never had to hear somebody tell me, yeah, you got you got a chance or whatever. Man, if anything, 
I started, and motherfuckers was telling me I was too old. Like, what? Yeah. You gonna start boxing? This guy started when he was 10, and I didn't give a fuck. I just knew, I just knew it was what I, what I was meant to do. But somebody, like, you had to have that moment when you were 18 where you told yourself, looked at yourself in the mirror and said, fuck it, I'm gonna box professionally. Like, there yeah. was that one thing. That no, was... the, mo the moment I said I was going to boxing is like, I was off rip. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Oh, do like it that? Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. All right, so next question. The other day, I was watching Creed, and I, yeah. saw, I saw your fight, right? First fight. Yeah. One shot, no cut. How long did it take for you guys to perfect that scene on Creed, the first, the first fight you guys had? Oh, yeah. So th the dope shit about that scene was there were no cuts, no different angles. It was one cameraman in the ring, and once the fight starts, you know, you have to, you have to do it. You have to do the whole scene perfect, bro, because you can't fuck up. The, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the camera's rolling. And we probably practiced that, that scene for about a, m a month. You know, every day just putting in work, me and Michael, Michael B. B. Jordan. Yeah, just practicing that scene over and over, perfecting it to the point where like we had it down so good where we can actually land punches because we knew it was coming. So we kind of like deflect the punch. You ever hit him by accident? No, I never hit him by accident, but he knew the punch was coming. But it, like I said, you know, we 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 had the scene down so good where, you know, I can I can land a shot and he's he already knows it's coming where he could brace for it. Mm -hmm. Um and when we did that shot, I think we 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 started that that scene like nine in the morning and we probably was shot to like nine at night. So it was like, you know, just different different takes and things like that, man. But it was dope. After after that movie, you feel like it, it changed the way people looked at you as a... Well, yeah. It, it, not just a boxer, but, you know. But no, it gave, it gave me a different, you know what I mean? There's people that recognized me just from the movie, not from, from fights, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I got the I got the um, people that recognized me from, from boxing, you know, boxing fans, and then people that know me from the movie. So it's pretty dope. But the cool shit about that scene was like, like I said, we shot like 10, 12 hours that day. And, you know, you get tired doing that scene over and over and over. But one thing like Stallone, he told me, he was like, yo, just make sure, make sure you do every scene like it's your last because you never know what tape they're going to use. So I'm like, oh, I right, bet. And I mean, so, you know, you got to go hard on every scene. Honestly, I think it's one of the best fight scenes. And I'm not saying because it, it was me, but. <laughs> I think it was one. I think it's one of the best fight scenes in the movie. Period. It's I like agree. it's like one of the most realistic boxing matches you ever seen in the movie, yeah. bro. It was very fluid, very smooth. Yeah, you know? it, was, it was dope. Talk to me about Madison Square Garden, dude. New York, yeah. Big Apple. Madison Square Garden was dope because I'm from Philly, so it's only an hour train ride from New York. So a lot of my fans went. A lot of my families went. Friends. And there's a I'm Puerto Rican, so it's a big Puerto Rican population in New York. I mean, it was a lot of love, man. And I, I, I fought in the, the Barclays Center as well. The year it opened up. Oh, with snap. the Brooklyn Nets That's where the Nets play, yeah. And um, I fought, it was a sold out, sold out crowd, like 14,000. Um, bunch of Puerto Ricans, so it was, it was love. I mean, so it was, it was just fun, <laughs> man. Fight, fighting in New York is like fighting home. I, I can see that, yeah. I can see that. It's almost like if you're on the west side, yeah, LA. Is but it's it, crazy. Yeah. I, I fought in. I, I fought in LA. You didn't like I, it. I fought a stub hub. No, I get a lot of love. LA. LA is a. I would say LA is like one of the, definitely one of the top five cities when it comes to boxing. What's the What's your favorite arena to fight at? I would say I would say New York. Yeah. I would say New York. But it's crazy, man. I fought everywhere, bro. I fought in New York. I fought in Liverpool. Uh, Mandalay Bay, MGM Grand, bro, I fought everywhere, man. Okay, now now that we heard the stories, you know, what's, what's next for KGR? Man, we working right now, bro. Like, I'm, there's a couple options we got out there. You know, um, so we gonna see what's up. You know, one thing I'm doing, bro, is I'm, you know, I stay ready, I stay sharp. You know, one thing is like, when you age, this is my 15th year as a pro. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you're lucky to have 10 years as a professional boxer. So 15 years is like. You just had that uh, fight not too long ago. 
yeah. right in the bubble yeah. how is it fighting in the bubble like no no crowd right except <laughs> for like how is it how, how's the energy you know honestly bro it didn't bother me at all because it's like i was prepared for it you know so you know you, you know you fighting in, in the empty arena so it's like mentally you kind of prepare yourself for it and then once once the fight starts bro you just locked into to the fight. Obviously you get an adrenaline rush when the crowd is going crazy and the action is getting crazy, you know what I'm saying? But I trained for it. What's the ritual? Like, you know, I feel like people have ritual to drink a certain thing before a fight. I don't like, got a ritual. Really? What? I think that's all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't into that shit. Like, I'm not, su I'm not superstitious into that shit. Mm. So like, I really don't have a ritual. I just kind of, honestly, bro, I, I kind of just go by like what makes me comfortable. One thing I did in my last fight uh -huh. that I, that I you never did? That I never did before was, um, I did a lot of meditation. Yeah. So like, I kind of like, I laid back. I listen, you know, I kind of play some meditation music. I kind of just did Why like is some, that? Just to kind of get into that zone, man, of what I wanted to do, mm, you know. I feel that. Just to kind of, you know, my whole game plan was I'm an outbox this guy. And yeah. in order to outbox, a fighter, especially a, a good fighter like, you know, Danny Jacobs. You know, I talk shit about him, you know, he's still a good fighter. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, to box a guy like Jacobs, you have to have a lot of discipline and you have to, like, stick to that game plan. You can't, you know, just a moment of distraction or a moment of just not being focused could cost you. You know what I mean? So I just kind of meditated in my room and focused and and what I was gonna do, man. And you know, the fight, honestly, bro, the fight felt easy to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The fight felt real easy to me, yeah. bro. I was kind of flowing through the fight. At some, at a certain point, I just couldn't realize, I, I couldn't believe how easy it felt. That's crazy. Cause like I said, he's a good fighter. Yeah, but I felt like I just controlled him with a jab and I was just kind of in that zone. Obviously the decision wasn't what we wanted. Yeah, right. they pulled a Steve Harvey from Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was and like, the irony, right? but, the but irony. it's crazy. You know what I mean? Look, here's the funny thing. Everyone knows I won the fight. Yeah, you know, the yeah. fans, media, you know what I'm saying? Everybody knows I won the fight. But I just think like, you know, I have a reputation where like, a lot of people think that I'm going to go into a fight and just brawl and a lot of people yeah. Don't understand it. I, I could box. And, okay. Yeah. And as as I get older, man, I use my experience and I use my skill. If I can make the fight easier for myself, why not? I've noticed that a lot of people say what you do have though is heart. Yeah. And I, people say it all the time. Like they say, like, oh, this guy got heart. Yeah. It don't matter who is in the ring with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think nowadays a lot of boxers pick and choose who they fight before. No, I don't think it's up to the fighters. Honestly, you know, that the heart factor is big because you can't teach heart. You know and I mean, there's some, you know, some fighters just stand out when it comes to that. You know what I mean? But, I, I think that goes back to like having nothing to lose. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. a guy that has just like completely nothing and he started fighting. I'm just having a different route. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I didn't, I didn't have, uh, like I said, the big manager or the promoter or a, a, a pile of money handed to me to just train and, and focus on my career. You know what I mean? I pretty much had to work all, all types of jobs. I was a janitor at a high school, bro. I was a janitor at a mall. I was, motherfuckers were like, what? But see, that's the thing. I look at these young boys coming up now yeah. and like, they act like they, Superstars like they're already. so, not, you know what I mean? It's cool to be confident. Yeah. But it's like, man, it's just a different breed because it's like, I had to work for my shit. Like yeah. grind for my shit, you know what I'm saying? For real. So it was like, it's just um, it's just a different lifestyle, man. I think it's social media that makes people. Social media fucks these fighters up. Right? Because like before they even, social media, yeah. I'm not even gonna say just fighters. Social media just fucks everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because you know, social media is like everybody just posts their highlights. Ain't nobody right. posting. Ain't nobody yeah. gonna post that they was fucking. They Who's working it? at yeah. fucking Home Depot. Or, and ain't nothing wrong working at Home Depot. Because here, here was my thing. When yeah. I worked at Home Depot, I was, I liked that job because I was cool as fuck with the with, with everyone that worked at Home Depot. My manager was cool as shit. Yeah. Yeah. I was I went to work and I was like, I did what I had to do because I was like, yeah, this is temporary. I got, I, I got, I'm, 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 you know, 
I'm going to do That's what true. I got to do. This I think, is, I think this it's is it very right important now. if you're working in a job like that. I mean, no, I'm saying, well, no, I'm not talking shit. We're coming up like that, yeah. those character, bro. Yes, yes. So I think what happens is like motherfuckers right nowadays, everybody wants instant gratification. Yeah. Everybody wants success like this. Mm -hmm. And motherfuckers don't realize, no, it takes years to do something great. So like you, I'm working at Home Depot. It, it took me eight years to finally get a world title fight and fight in Madison Square Garden and finally make a good payday. And eight years. Motherfuckers start tripping with eight days. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers want results in eight days. Hey, so it was like, you know what I mean? Before, so it's, before it's you got funny. that big, that big paycheck, you know, because like, like I said, we were talking about earlier, like how do fighters, it's hard to juggle being financially stable and still trading and trying to be the best fighter at the same oh, time. Hard. Like, so what were you living at? Like, what, what was, what kind of car are you driving? Like, at the time, you know? <sighs> Before that fat paycheck. <laughs> like, did you have roommates in the apartment? Like, no, 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 no. Um, no, I had an apartment, man. But like you're still just... able to afford living in an apartment. Yeah, I had an apartment. That's well, good. you know, the cost of living ain't a, in Philly ain't like LA, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, you know, I was in the so hood. the Home Depot check was pretty much paid for that. Yeah, you and know, then... and then I had my fights and stuff. and. And like I said, man, to me, it was just like, this is temporary. And I wasn't tripping off of it, bro. Cause like, you know, I grew up, I grew up, um, I grew up not having much dog. You know and I'm saying so like, you know, to me, it was, it was nothing to, to go to work and, and grind. Yeah. Cause you know I mean, it wasn't like I, I had a fucking, you know, this lavish lifestyle or whatever. I agree. You know I agree. Saying? I just had to grind off rip. All right, let's talk about something fun. When you got that first paycheck, what was the first splurge that you, you bought? Like, you know, that big... Uh, shit. <laughs> I think a like chain buying of... Buying jewelry and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid shit, blowing my money. I, I ain't gonna front, I was fucking my money up. <laughs> I was fucking that shit up. Cause you gotta understand, you know, you young, you ain't never made yeah. no money. Yeah. Now you making this fat check and, you know, to make money is easy, but to to know how to invest it, to know yeah, how to be smart yeah. with it, that's the hard part. And I wasn't educated on that when I was young, man. So Not I was just course. like, taxes? I ain't know about taxes. What? I pay taxes? <laughs> 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 yeah, college is you down like, yeah. God damn. <laughs> but it, you know what I mean? I was just, I was having fun with it, bro. I was, you know, I got it out of my system, you know, and then, you know, I smartened up. And then, you know, eventually down the line, I started like, Invest in buying property, yeah, apartments, yeah. and and just you know, you know, you, you got smart enough because this shit don't last forever, bro. Of course not. Of course you know not. I mean, so you gotta you gotta plan for for life after boxing. Life after boxing, though, not yet, man. No, but I'm saying, you know, you have to plan for that. I agree. Mean, this is a this is a young man sport, so. You know, like I said, you're, you're lucky to have 10 years. So for me to be in this shit 15 years That's and crazy. still be fighting on a, on a, on a world-class level is kind of, it's kind of crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the crazy part about it is I feel like I'm getting better. You know what I mean? So. More mature with the skill set, huh? Yeah, yeah. Not better. As, like, I mean, obviously I'm not as fast as I was or, or nothing like that, but I, I had the experience. You know what I mean? So. You know, it's just like, it's funny. I was watching like an article of LeBron James and they're like, yo, he's playing his best basketball ever. That's insane. And and LeBron was talking about how like the game's easier to him because it's like, it's a mental thing. It's how you how you analyze the game, how you read the game. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and that's how it is with me in, in the boxing match or even when I'm training and I'm, and I'm like sparring, I'm working on things that I never like, I never saw when I was, um, I was in my twenties, you know what I mean? So it's fun, it's like, to me it's fun. It's like, you know, you're like, you can kind of maneuver yeah. different things and you can kind of uh, read a fighter and make them pay for mistakes and it's things. It's a chess match. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. fun, I enjoy it. So, you know, <clears throat> obviously that fight, last fight with Daddy Jacobs wasn't what you wanted. Um, and you've been trolling the fuck out of this guy. <laughs> I'm not even trolling him, bro. <laughs> I just be talking facts, bro. <laughs> I just be what's, talking facts. What's the end, man? Cause you know, like, I don't pick, I don't Cause pick you're on... giving the fans a message when you post these things. Yeah, and you have to agree. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just messing with him, man. You know, like, you know, look, you know, the dude thought it was going to be an easy fight. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He got outboxed, and that was it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He got outboxed. You know, he's talking smack, saying he was going to do this, do that. He ain't do nothing. You know, and and it's funny because like a lot of people, you know, like the commentators and stuff, they thought it was a boring fight. It whatever. Is, yeah. What they don't realize is I I threw um, double the amount of punches he threw, and you know what I'm saying? Like, he wasn't committing because I didn't allow him to, you know, I was countering him. Mm-hmm. I was keeping him honest and I was like, I was able to, I was able to put his punch output down because he was like, he didn't realize how sharp I was with my counters. You know what I'm saying? So I pretty much dictate the pace, bro. Yeah, you know I, mean? I agree. Totally agree. Yeah. Watching the fight, yep. And and you know now that you're saying this in the in dropping gems episode one, people are gonna ask questions, bro. When's it gonna be the next fight? People are gonna people want it now, bro. No, yeah, we we there's a couple there's a couple um, names, man. You know the fight out the fight I want. You know what I mean? Is Mungia, mm. Jaime Mungia. So anybody that don't just, watch boxing, just because explain. Jaime, Jaime Mungia, former world champion at, at at junior middleweight, he just moved up to middleweight. Why him? And I just think it's just one of those fights that makes sense. You know mm. what I'm saying? You know, M- Mexican, a Mexican and a Puerto Rican is like the biggest rivalry in boxing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, man, Mexican fans and Puerto Rican fans are probably like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. boxing is a religion. Boxing is a thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a thing. I agree. So, you know, as far as for, as far as for the fans, man, just... It's a great fight for the fans. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of those fights that motivates me, that gets me like, you know, gets me going. Because at this point in my career, man, I, I just don't want to fight anybody. Facts. I mean, it's a waste of energy at that point, right? I mean, you got to, you know, I want to, I just want to fight, you know, the top guys. And he's one of the top guys at, at, at middleweight. When do you think that will happen? Well, we're talking. I, just, I really can't say right now. Of course. But, of course. You know, we're in to- I'm in talks with his promoter and shit. Honestly, I think they're I think they're trying to they're protecting them. You know what I mean? I think they know From like you? I think they know that, you know, I have the experience factor on them. I, the kid the kid is good, man. He's strong. He? He's solid. He's like twenty five, I think. Okay. He's solid. He's strong, but but who knows, man. We'll see how it plays out. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah. of course. Let me blow dry here. What time is it? What's the time check right now? So. Damn, bro. Pretty much that. Damn. Hey, you bet. <laughs> go right. I'm I, gotta, go. I gotta hop on that bird. Thank y'all for tuning in. This one, right? You good, you good, you good. Yo, heading over there right now. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I was up the block in the cut. <laughs> All right, bet. All right. One. You ready? All right. All you should have caught that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in to the first episode of Dropping Jabs. We just finished it with KGR. We're about to head out to the Badlands gym out there in Ninth and Main in downtown LA. See y'all soon. Yeah, yeah. All right. Ah. All right, here we are at Badlands Boxing Gym located in downtown LA on Ninth and Main. As you guys can see, they're already working their asses off. So they all have it. The guy himself. I can do this, huh? All right, what's next, coach? Starting with the jab. This hands up like you on a phone call. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, this hands right here. Boom. Step in with a jab. When you step in with a jab, rotate the wrist. See that how I stepped in? Yeah. When you bring it back, back here. But when you come back, uh-huh. you come back on an angle. So the jab is off the angle. Don't be here. Don't oh, be okay. squared up. Like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So drop this a little bit right okay. there. Boom. Right? Because so. you're protecting your chin and you're protecting your ribs. Okay. This is what you're doing over here. Step more jab, bring it back. You're on an angle. Okay. Step in. So when you bring it back, don't come here. Okay. Come here. Okay. You're always you're always in this position. Step in, step in. Step in, step back. Step in, step back. Now when we throw it right hand, step in. Rotate the rotate the hips. You see that? Yep, you're in the back yeah. toe. So back, right here. Get loose, get loose, get loose, get loose. Step, rotate. See that? So when you rotate, don't drop it. Come here. Okay. Right? Because your chin is behind this shoulder. Uh-huh. Right? You protect your chin. 
Okay. Bring it back, back on the angle. So one, two. Bring it back on the angle. One, two. Back on the angle. When okay. you come with the one, two, leave it out. Now you're gonna rotate your hip and shit back that hip. See that? Yep. Okay. So leave the right hand out, straight, boom, rotate the hips. Boom. See that? that? So the hips, so face your feet. See how they're spreading out? Yeah. Put them right back. Put them right back in position. It's a punch. Okay. So we go one, two, shift the hip. Yep. So when you nice. shift the hip, the head stays centered. There we go. Boom. You see that? Mm hmm You put yourself in position now to throw a right hand. So when you throw the right hand, this goes back on defense, and boom, you shift. Mm. So this, this, now you don't like set that? that leg back. You're just now on the toe. Oh, okay. See that? When yeah. you shift back with the hook, rotate the hips, put the cigarette out. See that? Yeah. Every time you punch, you put yourself in position for the next punch. Mm -hmm. So right from here, yeah. we can then throw an uppercut. Now, when you throw the uppercut, we're back on defense now. Oh. Back on defense. I see, I see. See, when you throw the uppercut, we stay low. Yeah. Because what happens is some people, when they throw the uppercut, they follow the punch and they go up with their head. And you can't do that because now oh. you're taking power away because now your foundation is weak. It's gone right here. And yeah. now you're exposed because you're up in the air now. So you always stay short. Uh, see that? You stay short. Yeah. Hook. Right. Hook. See? Everything is shifting. I see. See? Yeah. Every punch you do. Even if you want to now step with a jab, you see how I got back on the angle? But yeah. did you just but jump see, forward? When you stepped in, we don't hop. Okay. See, right here? You just slide? I step. Oh, yeah. My yeah. back leg stays, stays there. I'm stepping. Oh, okay. See that? So okay. now throw a jab. Throw a jab. Throw a jab. Give me a one, two. Yep, shift the hips. One, two. Keep the head center. Keep the head center. Now give me one, two, three. Good. There we go. Okay. okay. See? That's cool, but you know yeah. why you fall up front? Because your vision went over okay, there. So and your eyes followed your body. Always straight ahead. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Go. One, two, three. What's up, man? You good? One, two, three. See that? Yeah. One, two, three. There you go. Jab, yeah. jab. Side, silent. Jab, jab. One, two. There you go. Right hand. Left foot. Right hand. Hands up. Okay. See, because look. Yeah. Throw that hook. Throw that hook. Boom. If the hand ain't up, I can yeah. hook back with you. Yeah. Hands up. Right hand. Jab. Right hand. Left foot. One, two. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. No. Straight uh, right hand. On uh, straight right hand? One, two, three, three. four. Straight right oh. hand. Hands up. One, two, three, four. There you go. Nice. Back. There you go. How's that? Looks good. How's good, yeah. right? How's a good How fight, man? What's up with it? It's a good one. Yep. So there you all have it. Thank you guys for tuning in for the first episode of Dropping Jams featuring Gabriel Rosado. And you know, the whole point of this show is to give you guys free game. And I hope you guys got some jazz in this episode. Thank you guys so much and have a good rest of your day. Bye.